Let's take a second to look at VCA faders within Studio One 3. Now, uh, VCA faders allow you to control the faders on a group of channels that are assigned to that VCA fader, but still allows you to have independent control over each channel fader uh, within that group, which is a bit different than how groups work. And that's a lot of groups. So what are we actually talking about here? Um, let's get some more real estate in our console. So I will close out the instrument panel and the channel list. And then now with the groups, if I wanted to have control over these two presence VSTs, uh, this first one is selected. I can then hold shift and then grab that right click, group the selected tracks. And then now I can control both faders at the same time. Um, which is good, but what if I want to have independent control? What if I'm working with 8 or 10 or 16 tracks and I want to be able to still get in and control each individual level, level while still having one fader that I can control all of them at the same time if I wish? Uh, that's where the VCA fader comes in. So let me right click and dissolve that group and we have a couple of different ways that we can add a VCA fader. Now I have a group of drum channels here. So it begins with this main BD. So I'll select that, come down to snare 2, hold down shift and select that. I'll then right click and then I'll add a VCA for selected channels. So now here's our VCA and I can then use this to control all of the faders there. But unlike the group track, I can still come in and make an adjustment on a per channel basis. So that's one way that we can add that. Uh, I will remove that. We could also just click in an area within our console, add a VCA ch uh, channel. And then when we add this VCA channel, we have these small boxes below the uh, meters within our other channels here. And then I can come in and say, take this main BD and assign that to VCA1. This is a more tedious way, uh, but if you're only doing a few, then this can work for you. And then snare 2. So whenever we have a VCA channel listed within the console, we're going to have these drop-down menus where we can choose. So we can have more than one VCA. If I were to add another one, then you can see we can choose between either one. And this can be useful for uh, nesting. So say you have uh, six harmony parts and then three low lead vocal parts. So say these are the harmonies. We could all send these to VCA1 here. Say these are the vocals, the main vocals. We can then send these to VCA2. We could then create a third where are we at here? There we go. We can then create a third and then come to VCA1, send that to VCA3, send this to VCA3, and then we have one fader to control everything. But then we can come in and control our our uh, background vocals, or our main vocals, main vox with this one. So I'll go ahead and actually remove that. And that's how we can remove them, by the way. And so now I've got all of my drum channels assigned to this one VCA. If I were to come in and play this track back. <laughs> I can then control the drums with uh, just this one VCA fader.
but still have individual control. Okay, and so my slow computer is kind of having problems working with all of this with the screen capture. But anyway, I think you get the point here um, and how you can use uh, VCAs in your mixes. And the best way to think of it is just as a controller. We have no audio that is being routed to this uh, VCA channel. And as a matter of fact, I still have all of these drum channels. As you can see here, they're routed to bus one. and that's here and so I've got effects that I'm still using on all of these channels so assigning them to this uh, VCA controller is not going to take away from our ability to apply effects to these uh, channels and still take advantage of using a bus uh, for greater control of our mixes so that is working with VCA faders within Studio One 3, and I will see you in the next video.